Thank you. 
resurrection of Jesus. And also this Sunday have a name Divine Mercy Sunday. According to the apparitions of Jesus Christ to Sister Faustina, who asked for this feast to be celebrated exactly on this second Sunday after Easter, it was established by John Paul II at the beginning of this century. So in this Mass I pray for parishioners, especially that all of us will be uh, how to say, welcoming the mercy of God and learning how to be merciful towards others. And uh, Father Andre is praying for eternal life for Emil Jursa, intention from Milos and then Mitro. Let us prepare our hearts for this celebration, asking for forgiveness of our sins. I confess. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the, the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord.
the second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. The Word of the Lord. Kindly rise. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. It was evening on the day Jesus rose from the death, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father had sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. After eight days, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. 
Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But this is written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. We celebrate the feast of this, you can say, like amazing expression of love, which is mercy, and means being merciful. For the it means love somebody who even does not deserve this. And this is God who, that's why you say divine mercy, that this is this perfect love that we can First of all, we need to receive it, to accept it, but also to love the same way. So we can imagine somebody, I'm talking about like our the best friend, or maybe somebody else that you love so much, your husband, your wife, your child, or maybe your parent, and then you have done something like a big offense. Maybe you abandoned that person. Maybe when somebody was asking for important moment for help, you are not there because you choose, you chose to mind your business, to have fun, I don't know, just to live your life. And then when you see somebody was suffering for this, maybe even, I don't know, even died, maybe got sick. And then maybe let's say they was alive, okay. So now that person later on shows at the door and you are speechless what to say, what will be the reaction of this best, best friend. We can expect, I don't know, probably will be angry, maybe will search for vengeance, maybe shout at us, or maybe I don't want to do anything for you anymore. But what we see, the reaction of Jesus. He's coming to his disciples. We know Peter denied him. I don't know the man. Even if just a few hours before, he was saying, I will put my life for you. But then he says, I want to be there to have my life safe. The other disciples run away. And what Jesus does, he enters the room and says, Peace be with you. I bring you peace. I bring forgiveness. I'm not trying to destroy you, to annihilate you. No. And this is kind of continuation on the prayer of Jesus on the cross, when he was saying, praying actually to Father, forgive them because they don't know what they are doing. So this is important to own the sin, own our sin, that it is us. Maybe we can find all kinds of excuses. Yes, I could. I get many important things to do. Anyway, I couldn't help much. My help will be, I don't know, maybe just being together, but the problem will be there anyway. And we can find all kinds of explanations and justifications. But still, the guilt can be inside of us and eat us up. That's why it's so important. This Jesus Christ who wants to show himself to his disciples. To be the first one to experience 
that he really forgives. Not only this, because he really died. So actually, the wounds that he is showing are the marks of his victory. They are glorious, kind of enlightening us, because they are no more have this, there are no signs of this deadly power of our sins, but rather immense power of God, of his love over them. So this was this first evening of the resurrection, but Thomas was not there. Did he have this experience of these words of Jesus, peace be with you? So he was saying, if I will not see, if I will not put my hands in his feet, in his wounds, I will not believe. Why is that? Exactly, because he knew those wounds were also my actions, my lack of love towards Christ. And I want to see if those sins are overcome. So this was the next Sunday following Sunday of the Resurrection, as though today. And Jesus Christ is coming, like, especially for him, because he knows his anguish, his doubts. Really, am I forgiven? If some of us, maybe, have done, like, a very serious sin, maybe it happened again and again, and we have maybe difficulty to believe, truly, God really forgave me again. Maybe I cannot forgive myself. So this is important that Jesus Christ is coming to him and says again the same things. Peace be with you. And this image shows exactly this moment. This image, maybe you know already, is how Jesus appeared to Sister Faustina almost 100 years ago. To manifest to proclaim again a new God's mercy towards every person. It's true, this mercy was announced already from the beginning of the resurrection, but we can say has to be manifested again in our times. Then it was after the first world war that looks like the evil in the hearts of people were so overwhelming, so destructive but also was coming the Second World War. So this manifestation of God's love was so important to be able to bring this renewal call to conversion. So we see exactly Jesus Christ who is coming with a greeting, peace be with you, and with a blessing. And the other hand is showing the wound in his heart. But you can see the rays white, and read, and Jesus Christ himself explains to Sister Faustina the meaning. The pale rays signify water that justifies souls. The red ray signifies blood, which is the life of the souls. Happy is the one who will live in their shelter. This reminds us the blood and water that flowed from the side of Jesus on the cross. And on Friday, on Good Friday, we start to pray Novena to Divine Mercy to prepare us for this feast, to recognize on one side the greatness, how to say, the heaviness of our sins, but on the other hand, the power of God's mercy for us who do not deserve. And also Jesus Christ and I gave another promise especially for this day, for the Feast of Divine Mercy, who in this day comes to the source of life. This one will receive complete forgiveness of guilt and punishments. In this day are open the entrails of mercy. I pour out all the sea of mercies on the souls that enter the fountain of my mercy. Let no soul fear to come to me, even if its sins were like scarlet. This is important, even every time when you go to confession, not to focus on our sins like this is the end of the world. Yes, to acknowledge them, to really be sorry for them, but to look forward, look on Jesus, that he has the answer, he has the healing. And also, as we heard in the at the beginning of this passage, Jesus Christ first says, Peace be with you, but then he breathed on them.
believed in Jesus, now was dwelling with them. How? Through forgiveness. So, this is the gift we received. Blood with the water. To be fresh, to be nourishing, cannot be stagnant, otherwise rots. One thing it smells, but also becomes even poison. The same way, mercy has to be spread, passed on. So, also in this day, we are called to be merciful to others, not just in general, let's say, to love everybody, but very concretely, thinking about those who actually has done something wrong to us, and to ask for the Spirit to forgive them, to say, I forgive you, not just in our head, somebody also needs to hear it. Maybe somebody from the family, I don't know, has done something wrong. Nobody wants to talk to him. Maybe just came from prison. Also, maybe even then, to visit him, to welcome him, to speak to him. Somebody lost job, to come to help him. Maybe to support him. Maybe visit somebody from your family. Maybe your neighbor who is in the hospital and has nobody to visit him. Maybe I don't know, uh, clothe those who are naked, who those are poor on the streets, to, I don't know, provide some food for them. So this invitation, even for those from the family, maybe you have to go far away. Sometimes it's easier to love, I don't know, children in Africa than close member of the family, because we are fed up with their weakness. That's why this invitation, welcome divine mercy today. Don't doubt that God is more powerful than my and your sins, but also ask for the Spirit. God, help me to love people the same way you love me. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died in the Spirit, he descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that through the gift of the Spirit, we, may, we recognize God's presence with us and profess with Thomas, my Lord, my God. We pray to the Lord. For the peace in troubled areas of the world, that Christ's victory over death may bring an end to war and suffering. We pray to the Lord. For those who like Thomas, do not yet believe that they may see Jesus through our words and actions of faith and charity. We pray to the Lord. For the sick and their caregivers, that they may trust in God's continuing love and presence. We pray to the Lord. For all who have died, that the Lord in His mercy may welcome them into His dwelling. We pray to the Lord. For the late Emil Jursa, for whom this Mass is being offered, may he enjoy eternal rest in God's heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord for the spiritual and physical well-being of all parishioners, we pray to the Lord. Lord Loving Father, we need your mercy. As you answer our prayers, fill us with the joy that comes from hope, and grant us the life that conquers death. We ask this to Christ our Lord.
has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalt in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with bl your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Sinai Methodius, and with all the saints, and whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. For our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were blessing to you and their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
We thank the following who made a Holy Week celebrations meaningful. Altar servers, lecturers, musicians, cantors, choir members, Eucharistic ministers, ushers, and those who prepared and decorated the church. We thank everyone who participated and dedicated their time. God bless you all. <clears throat> we will celebrate the Assumption of the Lord tomorrow on Monday with Mass in English at 9 a.m. and Slovak at 7 p.m. On that Mass tomorrow, our Archbishop Francis Leo is inviting us to join him in our Darcyan Concentration of the Blessed Virgin Mary. After English Mass, there will be prayers of all the mysteries of the Rosary. We will have Parish Council meeting on Wednesday, April the 10th at 7.45. The meeting of the Fathers will be on Monday, April 15th at 7 p.m. in Slovak. We invite young people for the youth meeting on Friday, April 19th at 7.45 p.m. after Slovak Mass. Redemptorist Mater Missionary Seminary is inviting you for fundraising dinner on Friday, April 19th at 6 p.m. Please come to support Please come to support information of seminarians. For tickets, please contact Father Gregory. Thank you. This is me. So you know that this is a seminarians that sometimes visit us, so it's good to support them. We have among us as well the members of the Chalice, and I invite Alex, our parishioner, to say a few words. Thank you, Father Gregory and parishioners, for letting me speak today about Chalice. In case you've not heard of Chalice, I will provide a summary of this, what this charity does and how you can assist Chalice. Chalice was founded in 1996 by Father Patrick Cosgrove, who has served as a diocese priest of the Archdiocese of Halifax, Yarmouth, since 1985. My family and I have been supporting a, ch a child for 16 years through Chalice. We receive Christmas letters and updates from the sponsored child. And I would like to comment that it is very rewarding to know that your money is going to a very good cause. Now, what does Chalice do? Chalice sponsors children and the elderly. In many third world countries, they provide education they provide nutritional programs, they provide capital projects and human development projects, disaster and critical needs response. Chalice consistently monitors and evaluates the eff efficacy of all their programs using the following criteria. So it's not just money going, you know, whatever, they, they are very responsible. Sponsored children are educated and are more prepared for their future and able to deal with risks. Families are more prepared and able to take care of themselves and able to cope with emergencies. Communities have more assets, infrastructure, and connections to care for one another. And here are a few statistics. Over 90% of the sponsorship dollars go directly to the recipients, which is quite a large number. They have over 25,000 children sponsored currently. They serve around 5 million meals a year. Now, to sponsor a child is very simple. On the table in the lobby, we put out pamphlets with information on needy children that need to be sponsored. If you decide to sponsor a child, it is $42 a month, and that's tax deductible. You'll get a receipt, and you can select a child from the form. Please do not take these pamphlets as each one of these pamphlets has been assigned to this church. There'll be four volunteers at the table to assist you if you have any questions. 
And please take a minute on your way out to view, we have a brief video running, and you can speak to one of the volunteers. If you do not wish to sponsor a child today, as we know, it is a very, um, uh, you know, thing to do, um, you can leave a donation, or you can also take a pamphlet, you can go on the Chalice website and sponsor a child at any time. So you can take your time, review all the children, make sure that it's what you want to do. And the, chal the website is chalice.ca. Thank you very much, Father Gregory and petitioners. Thank you very much for this work, I would say, the call that you accepted. So, as you heard, it is the concrete people, not just giving to, I don't know, certain country, but is a concrete person who is receiving this. So, as you heard, tomorrow we celebrate Annunciation of the Lord. And it's our advertisement is we consecration to the Virgin Mary. And for this, we are called also to prepare. So, after, right after the final blessing, there is a prayer. So please stay, be patient, let us prepare our, our hearts for this. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. San Michael, the Archangel, Defend us in battle. We have protection against the wickedness. We pray. And you love the prince of the heavenly host. By the power of God, trust in Christ, Satan. And all the things of the spirit. And above the world, singing the new songs. So now we step prayer. A reading from the Holy Acts of Apostles. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. All these were constantly uh, rewarding themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. We may be seated. It's a reflection from Pope Francis. We'll find her again on the first day of the church. She Mother of hope, in the midst of the community of such fragile disciples, one had denied, many had fled, all had been afraid. She simply stood by in the most natural of ways, as if it were something completely normal. In the first church, enveloped in the light of the resurrection, but also in the trepidation of the first steps that had been taken in the world. For this reason, we all love her as mother. We are not orphans. We have a mother in heaven who is the Holy Mother of God because she teaches us the virtue of waiting. Even when everything seems to lack meaning, she is ever confident in the mystery of God even when he seems to have eclipsed himself due to the evil of the world. In the most difficult moments, may Mary, the mother that Jesus gave to us all, always support our steps. May she always say to our hearts, Arise, look forward, look to the horizon, because she is the mother of hope. Now we pray, Talitha me to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Lord have mercy. 
Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ hear us. God the Father of heaven. God the Son Redeemer of the world. God the Holy Spirit. Holy Trinity one God. Heart of Mary, pray for us. Heart of Mary after God's own heart, pray for us. Heart of Mary in union with the heart of Jesus, Heart of Mary, the vessel of the Holy Spirit. Heart of Mary, shrine of the Trinity. Heart of Mary, home of the Word. Heart of Mary, immaculate in your creation. Heart of Mary, flooded with grace. Heart of Mary, blessed of all hearts. Heart of Mary, throne of glory. Heart of Mary, abyss of humbleness. Heart of Mary, victim of love. Heart of Mary, nailed to the cross. Heart of Mary, comfort of the sad. Heart of Mary, refuge of the sinner. Heart of Mary, hope of the dying. Heart of Mary, seat of mercy. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Immaculate Mary, meek and humble of heart, conform our hearts to the heart of Jesus. Let us pray. Lord, our God, you made the immaculate heart of the Blessed Virgin, Mary, the home of your eternal word and the sanctuary of the Holy Spirit. Give us a heart that is free from sin and attentive to your will, that faithful to your commandments, we may love you above all things and seek to help others in their need. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
V mene Otca i Syna i Ducha Svetého. Milosť nášho Pána Ježiša Krista, láska Boha Otca i spoločenstvo Ducha Svetého nech je s vami všetkými. Hristos vás kres, a istinu vás kres. Drahí spolubrat kniazstve, milí priatelia Kristovi, vítame sa na Sviatok Božieho milostredenstva tu v Slovenskom kostole, aby sme si uvedomili, že sami to milostredenstvo, ktoré sme prijali od krstu, ktoré sa nás rozlieva potom cez Sviatok zmierenia Eucharistia, cez ďalšie prejavy Božej lásky, sa má rozlieva cez nás do nášho okolia. Keď človek si milostredenstvo vie ceniť a prijať, vtedy ho vie aj dávať. A koľko možno aj manželských kríz, aj rozpadnutých rodín by mohlo byť zachované aj iných pekných vzťahov, keby sme si uvedomili, ako je dôležité milostredenstvo v našom živote. Bez neho nevieme spolupracovať, nevieme byť jednotní. A preto si to tak vyprosujme pre všetky naše vzájomné vzťahy, lebo to je to, čo uzdravuje. U myslí Svetých Honší dnes máme za zosnulý Alois Antonín Lazarčík, Anton a Zinaida Stolárik a tiež za zosnulý Ernest Velosič e, od Cyrily Ána Ziak. Samozrejme, pamätajú modlitbe aj na to, čo sa teraz viete, že udiel včera na Slovensku, že malo byť také stretnutie mládeže e, na spiskej kapitule vyše tisíc mladých spiskej diecezy s Františkom Trstenským. Boli sme spolu kedysi na univerzite a, a žiaľ tam mne, mne zatiahnu do brzdov, autobusa pohol a tri mladé dievčatá prišli o život, tak celé Slovensko sa modlí za to, aby za tie rodiny, aby tento šok pán Boh pomohol tak prežiť a jasne, že aj za, aj za tých zosnulých. No a takisto samozrejme prozme aj za nášho nového slovenského prezidenta, za to na Veľký piatok modlí, aj za tých, ktorí nás zákonite spravujú, za to, aby bol to človek múdry, schopný spolupráce, zmierenia, ako sa tam hovorí, pravý pokoj, blahobyt ľudu a náboženská sloboda, aj úcta k životu od počatia po prirodzenú smrť, podpora rodiny a manželstva muža a ženy a ďalšie tie veci, ktoré sú tak potrebné v spoločenskom živote, o to viac, že sami tu vidíte, ako je to niekedy náročné, tak to prosme, aby sa to aj tam v našej vlasti a v domovine tiež darilo s Božou pomocou zodpovedným konať. Vložme tam aj tie osobné úmysly, ktoré máme v srdci, aby táto slávnosť bola pre nás ozaj požehnaní. Na úvod si pripomenieme pokrepením vodou to, čo nám kedysi Boh v krste daroval. Všemohúci a väčší Bože, Ty si chcel, aby nám voda bola zdrojom života a očisty, kúpeľom duše a prameňom väčšného života. Požehnaj túto vodu, aby nás posilnila v dnešný deň zasvetení Tebe, Pane. Nech v nás obnoví živý prámeň Tvojej milosti. Napadne nás duchom milostredenstva a pokoja, zmierenia a solidarity. Chráni nás pred každým zlom duše i tela, aby sme k Tebe prichádzali s čistým srdcom a v Tebe našli svoju spásu skrze Krista, nášho Pána.
Sláva Bohu na výsostiach. sa. Nekonečne milostredný Bože, každoročnou slávnosťou Veľkej noci oživuješ vieru svojho ľudu. Prosíme ťa, zveľaďuj v nás svoju milosť, aby sme stále hlbšie chápali, akým kúpeľom sme boli očistení, akým duchom sme boli znovu zrodení a akou krvou sme boli vykúpení. Skrze nášho Pána Ježiša Krista, Tvojho Syna, ktorý je Boh a s Tebou žije a kráľuje v jednote Ducha Svetého po všetky veky vekov. Čítanie zo skutkov apoštolov. Množstvo veriacich malo jedno srdce a jednu dušu. A nik z nich nehovoril, že niečo z toho, čo mali je jeho, ale všetko mali spoločné. Apoštoli veľkou silou vydávali svedectvo o zmrtví staní pána Ježíša a na všetkých spočívala veľká milosť, veď medzi nimi nebolo núdzného, lebo všetci, čo mali polia alebo domy, Predávali ich a čo za ne utržili, prinášali a klárli apoštolom k nohám a rozdeľovalo sa každému podľa toho, kto ako potreboval. Počuli sme Božie slovo.
Boria všetci Boha bojní, Jeho milosrdenstvo trvá na veky. Čítanie z prvého listu svätého Apoštola Jána Milovaný, každý, kto verí, že Ježiš je Kristus, narodil sa z Boha. A každý, kto miluje Boha ako Otca, miluje aj toho, kto sa z Neho narodil. Podľa toho poznáme, že milujeme Božie deti, keď milujeme Boha a plníme Jeho prikázania. Lebo láska k Bohu spočíva v tom, že zachovávame Jeho prikázania. A Jeho prikázania nie sú ťažké. Veď všetko, čo sa narodilo z Boha, premáha svet. A tým víťazstvom, ktoré premohlo svet, je naša viera. Veď kto iný premáha svet, ak nie ten, kto verí, že Ježíš je Boží syn. On je ten, ktorý prišiel skrze vodu a krv, Ježiš Kristus. Nie len skrze vodu, ale skrze vodu a krv. A duch to dosvedčuje, pretože duch je pravda. Počuli sme Božie slovo. Zatvorenými dverami. 
nohami. Prizjal Ježiš. Stál si to prostred a povedal im, pokoj vám. Ako to povedal, ukázali im ruky a bok. Učeníci sa zaradovali, keď videli pána. A znova im povedal, pokoj vám. Ako mňa poslal Otec, aj ja posielam vás. Keď to povedal, dýchol na nich a hovoril im, Príjmite Ducha Svetého. Komu odpustite hriechy, budú mu odpustené. Komu ich zadržíte, budú zadržané. Tomáš, jeden z dvanáctich, nazývaný Didymus, nebol s nimi, keď prišiel Ježiš. Ostatní učeníci mu hovorili, videli sme pána, ale on im povedal, ak neuvidím na jeho rukách stopy po klincoch a nevložím svoj prst do rán po klincoch a nevložím svoju ruku do jeho boku, neuverím. O osem dní bol jeho učeníci zása vnútri a Tomáš bol s nimi. Prišiel Ježiš, hoci dvere boli zatvorené, stal si to prostred a povedal im, Pokoj vám. Potom povedal Tomášovi, vlož sem prst a pozri moje ruky. Vystri ruku a vlož ju do mojho boku. A nebud neveriaci, ale veriaci. Tomáš mu povedal, pán môj a boh môj. Ježiš mu povedal, uveril si, pretože si ma videl. Blahoslavení tí, čo nevideli a uverili. Ježiš urobil pred očami svojich učeníkov ešte mnoho iných znamení, ktoré nie sú zapísané v tejto knihe. Ale toto je napísané, aby ste uverili, že Ježiš je Mesiáš, Boží Syn, aby ste vierou mali život v Jeho mene. Počuli sme slovo pánovo. Nedela Božeho milosrdenstva. Ježiš Kristus v 30. rokoch minulého storočia zjavil sa sestre Faustine a odkázal jej to poslanie Božieho milosrdenstva. Nie je to v podstate nič nové. O církev to stále ohlasovala. Pravdou všetkým samotný Ježiš Kristus bol ten, ktorý už vtedy hovoril o tom milosrdenstve. Aj tiež týmto spôsobom, aký počujeme v dnešnom Evangeliu. Možno sme si príliš zvykli Áno, samozrejme, Kristus stal z mŕtvych, ukázal sa učeníkom a im hovoril pokoj vám. Ale čo sa vlastne stalo? Dobre sa zastaviť nad týmto tajomstvom. Môžeme si predstaviť, možno aj dokonca pripomenúť takú udalosť z nášho života, že sme mali veľmi dobrého priateľa. Možno niekoho, ktorého, koho veľmi milujeme, manžel, manželka, možno niekto z rodičov, ktorého sme veľmi sklamali. Možno sme, neviem, urobili veľkú, ako veľkú po veľkú bolesť. Možno sme nechali samých, neboli sme pre nich. Možno sme dokonca aj zradili. Sme urobili takúto vec. A teraz tá osoba prihádza a je vo dverách. Neviem, možno, a nevieme, čo povedať, ako reagovať. Možno, čo nám prichádza prvé do hlavy, čo teraz bude. Možno sa pomstí, možno mi vynáda, možno mi pripomene, čo som to presne urobil, ako som nebol ako priateľom či tomto milúcov osobou. A budeme sa hľadbiť, budem mať vyčetky svedomia. Možno niekto nám bude hovoriť, však čo si mohol urobiť, nič sa nedalo. Okrem toho, mal si dôležitejšie veci a neviem, spôsobne.
postu tych hovorek. Ale nie wiem, ako byśmy sme sa chceli ospravedlňovať. Možno stále v našom srdci je vyčitka svedomia. Možno hnev na samých seba. Možno nevieme sami seba odpustiť. Lebo je v nás tá chaňma, chaňmime sa, že sme to nedokázali, nedokázali milovať. A práve vidíme v tejto udalosti tým, ktorí Krista zapreli. Preto všetkým vieme, Peter, nepoznám toho človeka, dajte mi pokoj. Či iní učeníci, ktorí utekli. I Kristus prichádza, je v dverách a hovorí, pokoj vám. Neprichádzam sa pomstiť, prinášam odpustenie, prinášam pokoj. Ale v pravde. I hovorí tiež, ako som, ako mňa poslal otec a ja pozielam vás. Otec ho poslal, aby priniesol odpustenie. I to konkrétne veľmi vyslovene hovorí. Dýchol na nich, dal im svojho ducha a hovoril, teraz vy chodte a neste to, ako som ja odpustil vám, aj vy odpúšťajte iným. To je veľmi dôležité. To odpustenie, to milosrdenstvo treba odovzdávať. Najprv prijať, samozrejme, že ja, bo čo to znamená milosrdenstvo. Hovoríme láska, láska, ale to je veľmi konkrétne meno. To je láska k tomu, ktorý si to absolútne nezaslúži. A to nie sú iba iní. To som ja a každý z nás. Keď sa počítame za griežnikov, keď nie, ľutujem. Nie je pre nás to bohatstvo Božieho milosrdenstva. I to je veľmi dôležité, že Kristus chce, že by ten odkaz, to strednutie s Božím milosrdenstvom bolo udalosťou každého človeka. Aj kvôli tomu, vieme, Tomáš nebol ten prvý večer. Potom, keď to o tom počul, hovorí, keď ja to neuvidím sám na moje oči, keď nevol, nevložím prst do týchto rán, neuverím. A čo sa stalo? Práve ako by špeciálne pre Tomáša na 8 deň, ako by dnes, Ježiš Kristus sa mu zjavil a hovoril, vlož svoje prsty do mojich rán a nebuď neveriaci, ale veriaci. Prečo sa dotýkať týchto rán? Prečo taká bola túžba Tomáša? Lebo on vedel, čo sa stalo. Že aj jeho hriechy sa prečinili smrť Krista. A chce sa presvedčiť, že naozaj to, čo som urobil, už stratilo svoju moc. Boh je väčší. Kristova láska je ponad to. Je väčšia. I práve takto Kristus sa zjavil ze streba v syne s týmto odkazom, aby ohlasovala, odovstávala to milosrdejstvo. Tak sa jej zjavil práve v tejto podobe. Tak by hovoril, pokoj vám a pravou rukou požehnáva. Lavou rukou ukazuje na svoje prepodnuté srdce. Ako si pamätáme, na kríži z neho vyplynula voda a krv. A takisto tu, to znamená neúplne takisto, lebo tu sú ľuče, lebo tieto rány nie sú viac už znamením utrpenia, ale Božej slávy. Ako sám povedal ze streba v stine, ponor, ponor sa do mojho odpustenia, do mojho milosrdenstva a získáš vieru. I hovorí, kto v tomto dni pristúpi k šiedru života, ten dostane úplné odpustenie vína trestov. V tomto dni sú otvorené vnútornosti mojho milosrdenstva. Vlievam celé more milosti na duše, ktoré pristúpia k šiedru mojho milosrdenstva. Nech sa žiadna duša nebojí pristúpiť ku mne, hoci v jej hriehy boli ako žarlat. Ako hovorí, že tieto biele ľuče znamenajú očistenie, pripomínajú krst. A červené ľuče, ktoré posilňujú duše, pripomínajú Eucharistiu. To je práve to milosrdenstvo sviatosti zmierenia. Tam, kde sme prvé krst, samozrejme, potom sviatosť 
zmierenia, kde sme akoby opäť boli ponoreni do Božieho milosrdenstva. I práve o to ide, že najprv potrebujeme prijať to milosrdenstvo, zaradovať sa v ním, nepozerať sa akoby s takým pohoršením. Zase som zlyhal, zase som padol do toho smrteľného riehu. Aj možno ne... <coughs> nebol to smrteľný riech, ale zase to isté, toľko som si robil predsa vzadí, už nebudem taký blbý a nespadnem do toho istého. A zase som tam, kde som bol. Nepozerajme sa aj stále, keď ideme na sviatu zmierenia. Nepozeráme sa na naše jehy, ako by dol koniec sveta. Ale radšej uvedome si tú veľkú záťaž. A tiež pozerajme sa na milosrdného Krista. To je veľmi dôležité, bo to je tá odpoveď. To je ten najväčší liek. I tiež, okrem toho, to je pozvanie. Ako Kristus bol milosrdný ku mne, aby ho sám bol, bol som milosrdný voči iným. Svetý otec Jan povolil druhý, druhý v roku 2000, keď sa viedol tento sviatok, lebo tak Kristus si prijal skrze srstu v cestu v Austinu. Ale pre celý svet Svetý otec v roku 2000 to ustanovil. Hovoril, že to milosrdenstvo potrujeme akoby posúvať ako voda, ktorá stále tieče. To milosrdenstvo tieče zo srdca Kristovo. Lebo keď voda sa zastaví a tam stojí dlhú dobu, potom sa pokazí. Dokonca sa možná to vodou otraviť. Ale to milosrdenstvo potrebujeme preukazovať iným. Čo to znamená? Tým, ktorí nás sránili, ktorí nám nepreukázali lásku, možno vďačnosť, aby sme vedeli im odpustiť. Vieme, že možno malé veci, zdá sa, že áno, ale väčšie bez Božej pomoci sa to nedá. Potrebujeme sa o to modliť, aj tiež konkrétne to vysloviť. Odpúšťam ti. Možno my máme byť tými, ktorí odprosujú. Okrem toho, zdy si všimnúť si, ako hovoril otec, svetý otec Jan Pavel II, toho, ktorý je blízko mňa, ktorý zapási ten veľmi dôležitý boj so zlom. Všimnúť si bráta, ako hovoril, ktorý sa so stratou práce a možnosti dostoného života a rodiny sa cíti opustený a strátený. Prísna pomoc deťaťu, duchovne alebo materiálne zanedbanému. Neodvrácať sa od hlapca alebo devčaťa ktoré sa stratili v svete rôznych závislostí alebo kriminality. Aby vďaka našej bratskej láske nikomu nechybal každodenný chlieb. Prosme o to otvorené oči, iba naše fyzické, ale hlavne našeho srdca. Aby sme vedeli milovať, by sme boli milosrdní, ako Boh je milosrdný voči nám. Na Božie slovo odpovedzme vyznanie svojej viery. Verím v Boha,
bratia a sestry. Je pánovým veľkonočným darom, že sme sa krstom stali Božími synmi a cérami. Predne sme s dôverou svoje prozby Bohu nášmu Otcovi a volajme Nebeský Oče, zmiluj sa nad nami. Nebeský Oče, zmiluj sa nad nami. Daj svojej cirkvi prežívať plnú radosť z Kristovho zmrtvý stania. Nebeský oče, zmiluj sa nad nami. Všetkým, ktorí k tebe prichádzajú s ľútosťou, daruj odpustenie a naplň ich svojim pokojom. Nebeský oče, zmiluj sa nad nami. Daj, aby vo svete nerozhodovali záujmy ekonomiky, ale životné potreby každého človeka. Nebeský oče, zmiluj sa nad nami. Daj, aby naše farské spoločenstvo bolo jedno srdce a jedna duša. Nebeský oče, zmiluj sa nad nami. Daj umierajúcim svoju milosť, aby mohli odísť z tohto sveta zaopatrení sviatosťami. Nebeský oče, zmiluj sa nad nami. Dopraj našim zomrelým, Alojzovi a Antonii Lazaričkovým, Antonovi a Zinajde Stolarikovým a Ernestovi Belešičovi. Prežívať všetko, čo si pripravil tým, ktorí ťa milujú. Nebeský oče, zmiluj sa nad nami. Bože oče, hoci sme hriešní, preto nás naplňa radosť zo spásy. Vrúcne ťa prosíme, vypočuj naše prozby, keď s dvojorou vzývame Tvoje milostredenstvo skrze Krista nášho Pána. Modlite sa, bratia a sestry, aby sa moja i vaša obeta zalúbila všemohúcemu Bohu Otcovi.
Prosíme ťa, Pane, láskavo príjmi dary svojho ľudu a daj, aby sme vyznávaním Tvojho mena a znovu zrodeným v krste dosiahli väčšinú blaženosť skrze Krista nášho Pána. Páhan s Vami, Hore srdcia, vzdávajme vďaky pánovi nášmu Bohu. Je naozaj dôstojné a správne, dobré a spásonosné. Teba, pane, vole byť v každom čase, ale slávnostnejšie v tento deň keď sa Kristus obetoval ako náš veľkonočný baráno. Veď on je opravdivý baráno, ktorý sňal hriechy sveta. On svojou smrťou zničil našu smrť a svojím smrtvých staním obnovil nám život. Preto ľudstvo po celom svete plesá nesmiernou veľkonočnou radosťou ale anielské zástupy neprestane spievajú chválospev na Tvoju slávu. Naozaj si, Svetý Pane, a právom ťa chváli každé Tvoje stvorenie, lebo skrze svojho Syna, nášho Pána Ježiša Krista, mocova pôsobením Ducha Svetého, oživuješ a posvedcuješ všetko. A ústavične si romažďuješ ľud, aby sa od východu slnka až po jeho západ prinášala Tvojmu menu čistá obeta. Preto ťa, Pane, pokorne prosíme. Láskavo posvať svojim duchom tieto dary, ktoré sme ti priniesli na obetu. Aby sa stali telom a krvou tvojho syna a nášho pána Ježiša Krista, ktorý nám prikázal sláviť tieto tajomstvá. On v tú noc, keď bol zradený, vzal chlieb, vzdával ti vďaky a dobrorečil, lámal ho a dával svojim učeníkom hovoriac. Vezmite a jedzte z neho všetci, lebo toto je moje telo, ktoré sa obetuje za vás. Podobne po večeri vzal kalich, vzdával ti vďaky, dobrorečil, a dal ho svojim učeníkom hovoriac. Vezmite a pite z neho všetci, lebo toto je kalich mojej krvi, ktorá sa vylieva za vás i za mnohých na odpustenie hriechov. Je to krv novej a väčšnej zmluvy. Toto robte na moju pamiatku. Hľa tajomstvo viery. Preto, Pane, keď slávime pamiatku spásanosného mučenia Tvojho syna, jeho slávneho zmrtvých stania a na nebo vstúpenia, akým očakávame jeho druhý príchod, prinášame ti so vzdávaním vďaky túto živú a svetú obetu. Zliadni prosíme na dar svojej cirkvi 
a s poznaním obetovaného baránka, ktorý podľa Tvojej vôle zmieril nás s Tebou. A všetkých, ktorí sa živíme telom a krvou Tvojho Syna, naplň Duchom Svetým, zmili Kristovi jedno telo a jeden duch. Nech Duch Svetý urobí z nás ustavičnú obedu pre Teba, aby sme dostali tenistvo s Tvojimi vyvolenými, najmä s preblahoslavenou Pánom Máriou, Božou rodičkou, so Svetým Jozefom, jej ženilom, s Tvojimi Svetými Apoštolmi a slavnými mučenikmi, so Svetým Cyrilom a Metodom a so všetkými Svetými, ktorí nám, ako dúfame, ustavične pomáhajú svojim orodovaním u Teba. Prosíme ťa, Páne, nech táto obeda nášho zmierenia priniesie celému svetu pokoja z pásu. Vo viere a láske upevňuj svoju církev budujúcu na zemi tvojho služovníka, nášho papeža Františka, nášho biskupa Františka, celý spor biskupov, všetkých kniazov a diakonov i všetok vykupený ľud. Milostivo vypočuj prosby tejto rodiny, ktorú si zhromaždil okolo seba a láskavo priveď k sebe dobrotivý otče všetky svoje rozstratené deti. Dobrotivo príjmi do svojho kráľovstva našich zosnulých bratov a sestry i všetkých, ktorí v Tvojej milosti odišli z tohto sveta. Pevne dúfame, že aj my sa tam s nimi budeme na veky radovať z Tvojej slávy v Kristovi našom pánovi skrze ktorého štedro dávaš svetu všetko dobré. Skrze Krista, s Kristom a Kristovi máš Ty, Bože, oče všemohúci v jednote Ducha Svetého všetkú úctu a slávu po všetky veky vekov. Ježiš Kristus, moja radosť, naša radosť je vzkriesený, preto oslavujme Boha Jeho slovami. Prosíme ťa, Pane, zbav nás všetkého zla. Udeli svoj pokoj našim dňom a príď nám milosredne na pomoc. Aby sme boli vždy uchránení pred hriechom a pred každým nepokojom, kým očakávame blaženú nádej a príchod nášho spasiteľa Ježíša Krista. Ježišu Kriste, Ty si povedal svojim apoštolom, pokoj vám zanechávam, svoj pokoj vám dávam. Nehľaď na naše hriechy, ale na vieru svojej církvy a podľa svojej vôle jej milosti vodaruj pokoj a jednotu, lebo Ty žiješ a kráľuješ na veky vekov. Amen. Pokoj pánov, nech je vždy s Vami. Dajte si znak pokoja. Pokoja vrátska.
hľa baránok Boží, ktorý sníma hriechy sveta. Blažní tí, čo sú pozvaní na hostinu baránkovu. Pane
modlíme sa. Prosíme ťa všemohúci Bože, daj aby veľkonočná sviatosť, ktorú sme prijali, neprestane pôsobila v našich srdciach skrze Krista nášho Pána. Farské oznámy. Ďakujeme tým, ktorí teda akokoľvek sa zapojili do oslav Svetého týždňa, minštranti, lektori, hudobníci, kantori, spevácky zbor, rozdávateľa Svetého príbania, kurátori, výstupa kostola, akýkoľvek spôsobom, ktorí ste obetovali svoj čas a svoje schopnosti, talenty pre spoločné dobro vo farnosti. Je vás za to pán požehná. Sviatok zvestovania pána sa teda tu v Kanade slávi tento rok zajtra, v pondelok, teda okrem Sv. Jomšie v angličtine o 9. bude aj večer o 19. hodine zajtra, teda táto slávnosť, alebo teda Sviatok zvestovania pána. Na tejto Sv. Jomšie na arcibiskup František Leo Utoronsky pozýva sa pripojiť k arcidieceznému zasveteniu sa nepoškodnenému srdcu pani Márie. Takže aj my zajtra večer pri Svetej Jomši teda tak urobíme. Zasadnutie Farskej rady bude túto stredu 10. apríla o 19.45 po večernej Svetej Jomši. Stretnutie otcov, ktoré chvala Bohu sa tak pekne rozbehlo, tak bude pokračovať o týždeň 8 dní v pondelok, 15. apríla o 19. hodine tu v kostole. E, takisto potom 19. apríla teda e, bude stretnutie aj mládeže, ktorí sa stretli počas farských misí už tu na, a teda potom tento piatok 19. pozývame mladých, môžete si medzi sebou dať vedieť. Každý je vítaný. Misijný seminár Redemptory z Mater pozýva na Friends of Andersingovú večeru v piatok 19. apríla o 18. Je to vlastne na podporu formácie seminaristov v tomto seminári, kde teda otec Gregor je napojený, takže stupenky potom môžete kontaktovať u neho. Všetci, ktorí predávajú kávu po slovenskej Svetej Onši, sú pozvaní teda teraz po Svetej Onši na krátke stretnutie v kuchyni pri hale. Držíme si s nami predstaviteľ organizácie Chalice, Alex, náš várnik. So I invite Alex to say a few words to us in English. Thank you, fathers and parishioners, for letting me speak to you today about Chalice. In case you've not heard of Chalice, I'll provide a summary of what Chalice does and how you can assist Chalice. Chalice was founded in 1996 by Father Pat Cosgrove, who served the diocese of Halifax, Yarmo since 1985. My family and I have been sponsoring a child for 16 years through Chalice. We receive Christmas letters, updates from the sponsored child, and I will comment that it is very rewarding to know your money is going to a very good cause. What does Chalice do? Chalice has a sponsorship of children and the elderly. They provide education. They provide a nutritional program. They provide capital projects and human development projects, disaster and critical needs responses. Chalice also constantly monitors and evaluates the efficiency of all their programs. Sponsored children are more educated and uh, more prepared for their future and able to deal with risks, so they're not stuck in a um, cycle of poverty. Families are prepared to be able to take care of themselves and to be able to cope with emergencies. Communities have more assets, infrastructure, and connections to care for other, particularly those in need. A few statistics. 
over 90% of, of the sponsorship numbers go directly to the recipients, which is a very high number. Typically, a lot of these charities are 60, 70%. Over 25,000 children and elders are currently sponsored. They serve last year 5 million meals. To sponsor a child is very simple. On the table at the back in the lobby, we put out some pamphlets with information on needy children who need to be sponsored. If you decide to sponsor a child, it is $42 a month, and you can select a child and fill out the form today if you want. We realize that this is a large commitment. If you only want to think about this, we have pamphlets at the back. You can go on the Chalice website at any time and choose and look at a list of all the children that are available for sponsorship and choose a child. There'll be four volunteers at the table at the back to assist you. Please take a minute to, on your way out of the church to look at the brief video we have there. Stop and talk to us, ask us any questions that you may have. If you do not wish to sponsor a child, you can also leave a donation and there will be a tax receipt if it's over $20. If you're undecided, as mentioned, please take home the information tablets and, mention, and visit the website, which is chalice.ca. Thank you much, very much, fathers and parishioners. Thank you very much for this mission. Bożego Minosrdzieństwa, trzeba i tak by ukazać to Minosrdzieństwo konkretnej osoby, a samozrejmie każdy za, rozchoduje za seba. Wyprawa na Birmowku będzie tak o 15 minut w kapankę. Też prosim aspoń jednego rodzica, żeby też przyszedł na zaczatok. Teraz wyprawujemy za zajtra na to świadę świadok zwestowania Pana na zasłodzenie sercu Panny Marii. Także teraz nie po pożegnaniu będzie modlitwa, która ma nas k temu przyprawić. Teraz przyjmijcie Boże pożegnanie. Jeszcze kratuczko jedną rzeczą zabudol. Tuto sobotę 13 aprila po obiedzie o 14.30 będzie w Otawie w polskim kostole, będzie mieć slovenską świętą omszu. Byście wiedzieli o jakichś Slovakach, co są tam w Otawie na okolí, mali by możliwość, tak są witani tuto sobotę po obiedzie. Pan s vami, nech vás žehná všemohúci Boh, Otec i Syn i Duch Svetý. Ite v mene Božom, aleluja, aleluja. Započúvajme, teda spojení s celou rozkarci diecezos do tohto poznania byť viac aj deťmi našej nebeskej matky. V skutkoch a poštoloch čítame. Keď tam prišli, vystúpili do hornej siene, kde sa zdržiavali Peter a Ján, Jakub a Ondrej, Filip a Tomáš, Bartolomej a Matúš, Jakub Alfejov, Šimon Horlivec a Júda Jakubov. Títo všetci jednomyselne zdravávali na modlitbách spolu so ženami, s Ježišovou matkou Máriou a s jeho bratmi. Pápež Fratišek sa zamýšľa nad zmyslom našej Marianskej ústy v katolíckej církvi aj takýmito vetami. V 
Znovu sa s ňou stretneme v prvý deň cirkvi. Ona matka nádeje uprostred tohto spoločenstva takých krehkých učeníkov. Jeden zaprel, mnohí utiekli, všetci sa báli. Ale ona tam jednoducho stála. Tým najprirodzenejším spôsobom, ako by to bolo niečo úplne normálne. V prvej cirkvi zahlené svetlom smrtvistenia, ale aj strachom z prvých krokov, ktoré bolo potrebné urobiť vo svete. Z tohto dôvodu ju všetci milujeme ako matku. Nie sme siroty. Máme matku v nebi, ktorá je svetou Božou matkou. Pretože nás v účičnosti čakania, aj keď za všetko zdá nezmyselné. Ona vždy dôveruje tajomstvu Boha, aj keď sa zdá byť neviditeľný kvôli zlu vo svete. V najťažších chvíľach nech teda Mária, matka, ktorú sme dostali od Ježiša osobne každý pod krížom, hľa tvoja matka, ktorú dal Ježiš každému z nás, nech vždy podopiera naše kroky, nech nám vždy hovorí do srdca, vstáň, pozeraj sa dopredu, pozeraj sa na horizont, pretože ona je matkou nádeje. Litánie k nepoškornenému srdcu Pany Márie. Pane, zmiluj sa. Kriste, zmiluj sa. Pane, zmiluj sa. Oče z nebies Bože. Synu vykupiteľ sveta Bože. Duchu svetý Bože. Svetá Trojica, jeden Boh. Srdce Pany Márie. Srdce Pany Márie, srdce podľa srdca, srdce podľa srdca Božieho. Srdce Pany Márie spojené so srdcom Kristovi. Srdce Pany Márie, nástroj Ducha Svetého. Srdce Pany Márie, svetiňa Najsvetejšej Trojice. Srdce Pany Márie, svetostánok vteleného slova. Srdce Pany Márie, bez poškvrny počaté. Srdce Pany Márie, milosti plné. Srdce Pany Márie, požehnané medzi všetkými srdcami. Srdce Pany Márie, vznešený trón slávy. Srdce Pany Márie, hlbina pokory. Srdce Pany Márie, zápalná obeď lásky Božej. Srdce Pany Márie, spolutrpiace s Ježišovým ukrižovaním. Srdce Pany Márie, potešenie zarmútených. Srdce Pany Márie, útočisko hriešnikov. Srdce Pany Márie, nádej umierajúcich. Srdce Pany Márie, sídlo milosrdenstva. Baránok Boží, Ty snímaš hriechy sveta. Baránok Boží, Ty snímaš hriechy sveta. Baránok Boží, Ty snímaš hriechy sveta. Modlíme sa. Milostrdný Bože, Ty si naplnil nepoškvrnené srdce Pany Márie rovnakými citmi zľutovania a nežnosti voči nám, akými je preniknuté srdce Ježiša Krista, Tvojho a jej syna. Daruj všetkým, ktorí vzývajú toto panenské srdce, aby pre jeho zásluhy zachovali trvalé zjednotenie citov a náklonosti s najsvetejším srdcom Ježišovým. Skrze Krista, nášho Pána. Amen.
Raduj sa, vesel sa, Pana Mária, aleluja. Modlíme sa. Bože, Ty si z mŕtvych staní svojho syna nášho Pána Ježiša Krista, potešil celý svet. Prosíme ťa, daj, z naprievoj rodičky Pany Márie, dosiali radosti väčšného života, skrze Krista nášho Pána.